Hello, I'm Bernard Norcott Mahaney. I work at the Blueford branch of the Kansas City Public Library. April is National Poetry Month, and during the month of April, I read poetry aloud. Uh, I read poetry aloud at other times as well, but <clears throat> I record it uh, in April. Um, for April 2018, I decided that I would read poems by William Wordsworth, uh, one of the founders of the English Romantic School of Poetry. Today's poem is entitled, A Narrow Girdle of Rocks and Stones. A narrow girdle of rough stones and crags, a rude and natural causeway interposed between the water and a winding slope of copse and thicket leaves the eastern shore of Grasmere safe in its own privacy. And there myself and two beloved friends one calm September morning, ere the mist had altogether yielded to the sun, sauntered on this retired and difficult way. Ill suits the road with one in haste, but we played with our time, and as we strolled along it was our occupation to observe such objects as the waves had tossed ashore, feather or leaf or weed or withered bough, each on the other heaped along the line of the dry wreck. And in our vacant mood, not seldom did we stop to watch some tuft of dandelion seed or thistle's beard that skimmed the surface of the dead calm lake, suddenly halting now a lifeless stand. And staring off again, starting off again with freak as sudden, in all its sportive wanderings all the while, making report of an invisible breeze that was its wings, its chariot, and its horse, its playmate, rather say, its moving soul, and often trifling with a privilege alike indulged to all, we paused, one now and now to the other, to point out, perchance to pluck, some flower or water weed too fair either to be divided from the place on which it grew, or to be left alone to its own beauty. Many such there are, fair ferns and flowers, and chiefly that tall fern, so stately, of the Queen Osmunda named, plant lovelier in its own retired abode on Grasmere's beach, than Naiad by the side of Grecian brook, or Lady of the Mere, soul sitting by the shores of old romance. So fared we that bright morning from the fields Meanwhile, a noise was heard, the busy mirth of reapers, men and women, boys and girls. Delighted much to, to listen to those sounds and feeding thus our fancies, we advanced along the indented shore when suddenly through a thin veil of glittering haze was seen before us on a point of jutting land, the tall and upright figure of a man attired in peasant's garb who stood alone angling beside the margin of the lake. Improvident and reckless, we exclaimed, that man must be, who thus can lose a day of the mid-harvest when the labor is higher as ample and some, and some little might be stored wherewith to cheer him in winter time. Thus talking of that peasant, we approached close to the spot where with his rod and line he stood alone, whereat he turned his head to greet us, and we saw a man worn down by sickness gaunt and lean, with sunken cheeks and wasted limbs, his legs so long and lean that for, for my single self I looked at them, forgetful of the body they sustained. Too weak to labor in the harvest field, the man was using the best skill to gain a pittance from the d dead, unfeeling lake that knew not of his wants. I will not say what thoughts immediately were ours, nor how the happy idleness of that sweet morn with all its lovely images was changed to serious musing and to self-reproach. Nor did we fail to see within ourselves what need there is to be reserved in speech and temper all our thoughts with charity. Therefore, unwilling to forget that day, my friend, myself, and she who then received the same admonishment have called the place by a memorial name. Uncouth indeed, as air by mariner was given to bay or foreland on a new discovered coast, and point rash judgment is the name it bears. So that was uh, Wordsworth's poem, A Narrow Girdle of Rocks and Stones.